Aloha. Welcome to the Greatest Awakening of God, program number 97. My friend, thank you for joining us. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask you to bless the listeners, Lord, those who are tuned in. Father, may I pray that they have a blessed day, Father, and whatever troubles they're going through, Lord, any bad news, let us all be good news, Lord, because you're in control, because, Lord, you love them so much. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Aloha, my friend. Welcome to the Greatest Awakening of God, program number 97. Yes, my friend, we hear today that, you know, we want to let you know that, you know, God loves you so much, my friend. You're special. We're not on this television show to spank you or give you the baseball bat. We, we're here to embrace you, Lord, just to let you know that God loves you so much that He wants you to be encouraged. My friend, take the time out and get to know the Creator of the universe. I mean, we, we take the time to get to know the beaches. We take the time to even get to know the food that we eat. Before we even eat, we're at the buffet table. We're looking, we're staring at the food. We're smelling them with our nose. We're looking at the commercials. We're enjoying the food, the lobster, red lobster, all this food that's just showing up on TV. We love, I love food, my friend. I'm just letting you know that if we can take the time to get to know the things of the world, I think it's time now that we should get to know God. My friend, you're special. God loves you. Like I said, you don't have to speak Hebrew, speak Greek. You don't have to be having all those plaques on the wall that says, I'm Bible college, I'm this, I'm that. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you understand truly that you need God. I don't want to be a Lone Ranger, my friend, because there is no Lone Ranger in this. It's either God or you're on your own. It's not good, I'm telling you. But I'm here to speak to you today that, my friend, you may be losing your job. You know, I got phone calls that this lady losing her car, the repossessed people are there to take the car. People are foreclosing on their houses. They got their pink slip, white slip, blue slip, whatever slip you call it. My friend, those that work for the government, they thought their job was secure, but they receive the big shoe, the big kick. They're getting out. They're getting early retirement. They're losing their money. They're losing their benefits. Their retirement benefits are getting hit, my friend. It's kind of scary if you really think about it, especially if you're surrounded with millions of people and then you go and try to find one job to make ends meet and all you're getting is, no, 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 sorry, we're downsizing. Sorry, it's fulfilled. Sorry, there's no opening. My friend, if that happens, it's a very scary moment because, you know, you need to eat. You got to get your food going and you only can borrow money for so long because after you've been borrowing, my friend, it's, it's, it's over. It's over. Nobody's going to be lending you money because your credibility is destroyed because you're not paying them back. So where are you going to go to? I mean, if you're going to go look for, in the rubbish can for cans and bottle, soda bottles and empty bottles for nothing because you got the homeless people beating you to it already. <laughs> and, the, and the people crossing the street, the old people exercising, they figure, why exercise without picking up some cans? So the odds of you getting cans now is going to be hard. All those bottles empty yeah, to redeem for five cents. But what I'm trying to tell you, my friend, God cares about you so much and He wants to help you. So I would recommend that you take the time out to get to know the Lord, my friend. Remember that God the Father loves you so much that He gave you your best. You know, don't be like those people that once they fell in love with Jesus and here's Jesus on the donkey coming in to Israel, coming in. And what they do is they throw the palms all the palm branches on the ground, Jesus walking on them and everything, they're all yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna to the King. They acknowledge Him as King, they love Him, they embrace Him. Everywhere Jesus was going, the crowd would follow Him, follow Him. But my friend, when things went happen, man, I'm telling you, when things went happen, my friend, it's just sad how they turned their back on Jesus when He was in front of uh, Governor Pilate, who was Washing his hands. This man is innocent. I want nothing to do with him. But he had to. And his wife was even mad at him. Don't you, don't you do anything to this man? I'll tell you, I had bad dreams about this guy. Meaning Jesus of Nazareth. But you know what happened, my friend? Jesus was just so lovable. He never condemned any of those accusers that was accusing him. He never even spoke ba bad to the governor at all. He didn't even defend himself, my friend. And then the governor washed his hand and then the people was yelling. And then the governor said, you know what? We have this tradition where we let one person go, one criminal. 
And that criminal he was talking about is Barabbas. Barabbas was in, was in jail because he murdered a Roman guard, a Roman soldier. And that punishment was imprisonment for life. But on that day, Governor Pilate had the people choose today. Who do you want me to set free? Now, I can set Jesus of Nazareth free or Barabbas. You choose who you want me to set free. Everybody was yelling, Barabbas, Barabbas. And then the governor Pilate looked at Jesus. But what about this man, Jesus of Nazareth? What about him? Everybody yelling, crucify him. Crucify him. The priests, the high priests, and all those corrupted, make-believing, lying devil, Christian, phony, crocodile tears, make-believers, undercover Christians was there. Crucify him. Barabbas? Everybody yelling, we want Barabbas. So the governor Pilate had to free Barabbas, and through the death sentence, which was a paper wrapped up and it was thrown over and the guard was given the death sentence for Jesus of Nazareth. My friend, it was a horrible day for that day for Jesus. But it was an awesome day for you and me today. Because Jesus gladly, gladly walked down that aisle personally for you, my friend, even before you was taught of, even before you was born. The Bible says before you was even born, God already knew your name. Yes, God knew your name. He knew your mother was going to name you that name. You know what I'm saying? But Jesus never defended himself. How many, under, uh, how many undercover Christians get caught lying, stealing, doing their crime, and they even try to defend themselves? But you see, my friend, if you broke the 11 commandment, you're busted. And my friend looked at me, what is the 11 commandment? Thou shalt not get caught. My friend, because you got caught with your hands in the cookie jar. You got caught in your white lies. Because they're all cousins to all lies. Even though your little, little fishtail story lies, they're all lies. My friend, it's going to eat you up. But most of all, my friend, is the unforgiveness. You got somebody you're still mad at them. I want to give them this. No, my friend. The Bible says love one another. Love your enemies. Not choke your enemies, my friend. You got to love them. You got to call them up and give them a phone call. I love you. <laughs> give them a call. Blow their mind. They might have a heart attack when you tell them that. Don't tailgate. If they're tailgating, you look. turn your mirror the other way so you don't can see behind. That way your blood pressure and your heart rate don't go pounding in the car. Every time you buy the traffic light, you're staring at the mirror. All you're doing is getting your blood pressure up. You notice the car getting closer. Who are you getting mad? You, 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 you look in the mirror. You notice you had a white face. Now your face turning red. Why? It's called high blood pressure. You want to come out of the car. You want to bust them up and bust their windows. My friend, you cannot do that. You see, it's against the law. To kill them is against the law. That's why you have to love them. Jesus said, love one another as you love Christ. Love God with all your heart. Mind, strength, and soul. Yes, my friend, I know you're surrounded with gossipers. Yes, you have friends that are gossiping. They're talking bad about you behind your back, but up front they're shaking your hand. I love you. And then as soon as you walk out the door, they're talking bad about you. They're snotty. You got those kind of hypocrite Christians everywhere you go, my friend. In church, they look holy. They carry the Bible under their arm. They smell holy. They even got the appearance of holiness look. But as soon as you pass by their house, walking down the street, exercising your dog, you can hear them cussing all the F words going on. You can hear them busting up the wife. You notice the wife coming out at night to empty the rubbish can. She's wearing dark glasses. Who be wearing dark glasses at night unless you're hiding something? Yes, she got black eyes from the husband. My friend, you got to have forgiveness in your heart. Because forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for you. God clearly says that before you go to the altar, take your gift back and go back and make it right with your brother. My friend or your sister. Make it right, my friend. Start that. It's time that you put your foot down and say, you know what? It's time I check myself out. Meaning, 
If, if I'm nasty, I have a bad attitude, snotty in the store, my, my nose in the air like this. You know what I mean? I only get one full grocery loaded in my wagon and here you come with only two items. I look at you. I go back behind you and grab another bag and I throw another bag of potato chip in my wagon. I still look at you like nothing. Instead of saying, oh, excuse me, ma'am. Oh, sir, you have only two items. Come, you can come before me. I mean, it's called being courtesy. It's called being loving, my friend. You know what I mean? People sticking finger to you, giving you the middle finger. Just put your finger up like this. Go like this. Tell them, go to heaven. Go to heaven. My friend, you don't need to give them the middle finger. You don't have to swear back at them. You know, and you're going to get ladies yelling at you too. Let me give you a piece of my mind. No, she need every piece of it. I don't want no piece of your mind. My friend, in life, I'm telling you, it's going to get rougher. But you know what? You truly can have a lovely day every day. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter. My friend, they talk about depression. But when you love God, when you love Jesus, we're not in depression, my friend. We're in recess. Big difference. You know why I love recess? We get P.E. We get to enjoy ourselves. Christians, we have recess because God has everything under control. God will take care of us, my friend. But if you're in depression, it's not good. You know why? Now you're going to be under the Great Depression, and then you get, your depression is getting, your, your health is going down because now you get high blood pressure. Then you got mental illness, and then you start talking to yourself. Then you start seeing clothes flying out of the closet. And then you start talking to yourself. What? Oh, okay. It's okay to talk to yourself, my friend, but if you're answering yourself back, you're in trouble. I'm telling you. My friend, I'm not here to make fun. I'm telling you, a lot of people are going out of whack. They're going crazy. And, and I mean, so much people, it's unreal, especially the parents is now. They're abusing their kids. I got teenagers calling me up that they want to burn the house down. They want to kill their mother, their father, their sisters, and stab them to death. They want to burn the house down and make ma marshmallows because that's how evil their parents is. What they did was when this, this, this child got into a car crash on the freeway, after the parents stole all the insurance money from that person, ran out of money, now they start mistreating him. Before he was the, the cream of the crop. Now they treat him like dirt because he no more money now. Now they're getting Social Security from the government because he's disabled. Then the mother lying to him, oh, you're only getting 250 a month, but actually, in reality, she's getting six, way more than that, 400 something, double that. You know what? Lies after lies, and then mistreating the kid, calling him, you're a dummy, you're stupid, you'll, you'll never make it. You know what? And then they won't let them go. They have power of attorney, and they're stealing their money, making them a prison in the house. And the guy now in his 20s, my friend, he wants to, they want, he wants to burn the house down. He's fed up with his lying devil parents. Sure, the Bible says, honor your mother, honor your father. But my friend, shame on the parents if you take an advantage. And then you got the father, the drunker, drinking liquor. Yeah, he goes to church, but yet he's sucking them up with hot liquor. And then he go back and abuse the son. You're a lying devil. You know what? You ain't going to have enough drink when you inhale screaming. I don't care how much liquor you're drinking now. You ain't gonna, you're going to be more thirsty than thirsty. Keep playing around. An abuse of a household member, you get arrested. It's a $2,000 fine, and you go to jail for that, my friend. I don't care if your son is mentally handicapped, mentally ill. Who the hell you think you are busting up your child physically with your big mouth, with your evil words that's coming out of your mouth, and now he's calling me up because he wants to murder you and burn the house down and kill all you guys. You know what? Sometimes I would think like maybe you deserve it, but in my heart I cannot think that way because I'm a minister, because I learned to love one another. So I got to call him back and say, no, don't do it. Love them. Let them abuse you. Let them connive you. But you know what? God not blind. God watching. My friend, for you parents out there watching this program, I'm telling you right now, I want to warn you. If you're pushing your child and you're treating them like dirt, and every day you lie, you're telling them, you're a dummy, you're stupid, you're a loser. I made you by an accident. I can kill you. I made you, I'll kill you. My friend, if, they, if you got parents talking like that, it's time you turn them in, tell friends, tell somebody, so they can start investigating, so they can get arrested. And you know what? I don't mind going to court, because when these guys come to me, I'll go to court and I prosecute their parents with gladness. You know why? My friend, you're a liar. The Bible says to take care of your child. It doesn't say go and abuse your child. 
my friend, they got to eat, you know what I mean? And how dare you stealing their social security money and then you're lying that they're not getting all the money and then you treat them like dirt after you stole all their insurance company money. We're talking over hundred thousands of dollars. Shame on you. Those are the kind of calls I'm getting. Why? I don't know, Lord. I'm getting all the young ones calling me with great depression because their parents is no good. They're evil. And they're still going to church. Why? You're going to burn in hell anyway. Until you truly repent. What is truly repentance? Meaning, you stop busting them up with your mouth, with your tongue. And you start embracing them and loving them and tell them, son, daughter, you can do it. You can do it. Hey, I'm going to back you up. How much money do you need to help you get to your goal? What do you need, my friend? You need a car? What do you need? I'm here for you. I'm your backup, my friend. I got your back. Hello. I'm here for you. You can do it. You're a winner. I believe in you. It's time that even churches, pastors need to repent and sit down with the people of the church. Never mind your own flat tire agenda. It's time that we get to sit down with the people of the church and sit down. What vision has God given you, my friend? And I start writing it down. Oh, God has given me talent. I love singing. I love playing the guitar. Oh, my friend. On Sunday, we're going to open up. We're going to have some good extra services out there. We want you to learn, you know, to worship and spend time so you can be a good worshiper for Jesus. My friend, the preachers need to get to the talents of people in the church. There's so much talented people sitting in the church. Talented, blessed, gifted. It's time that we sit down with them and find out the truth about them instead of ourselves, about our, our motive. Our motive for the church, for saints. Our master plan for the church. Our, my friend, it's every one of you is a puzzle of God. You know how ugly the puzzle would look? You put a big giant puzzle in the frame, you put them up on the wall, and you're missing the eye, one, one puzzle missing. That puzzle is no good. You got to throw them in a rubbish can. That proves that every single one of you are gifted, are blessed, and can be used by God. My friend, and God needs you. Every one of you. No pastor have any right to abuse anybody in the church at all. You know, they got their own cliques. You go to a lot of churches, you notice. They got their own crowd. They got their own kind. They got their own family members. They got their, it's all cliques. Favoritism. And that is a shame when that's happening in the house of God. And that is a shame when it's happening in a family home where mother gave birth to two, two sons. She spoiled one. That's her favorite one. The other one is the black sheep. Same thing with the daughters. You got one's good one, the mom's spoiling them. Then the other one coming out, hey, you're on black sheep. They mistreat you. They spit on you. They treat you like leftovers. You're garbage. They talk to you like dirt. But the other one, they're brown nosing them. They're taking care of them. They're giving them the platter. They're rolling the carpet. And here you're getting all pissed off. I don't blame you, my friend. It's a shame when you got loved ones cannot even get along with each other. Why do you want to go and preach to somebody? Why do you want to go and talk about God to somebody when you can even show love in your own house? Husband busting up the wife. Black eye. Big nose. Busting them up. Pulling the hair. Slave. Husband grumbling, my wife is a slave. She came out of my rib. She need to make the coffee. I said, sir, you're wrong. Read your Bible. It says Hebrews. We read the book of Hebrews. Hebrews, the coffee, not her, my friend. How dare you use scriptures against your own wife, against your loved ones, against your friends, against those that are, you know what? They fall short, but you know what? We are supposed to be leaning over and grabbing their hand and bringing them up. My friend, we need to call them up and encourage them. Hello, my friend. How are you? Encouragement, my friend. Not, we're all going down. We're all going down. Come on, man. I had bosses like that. You know, I call them jerks. The big A. I call them the big A with the, the two S. Yeah, terrible when you get bosses like that. The nose in the air, the brown noses, and they mistreat their workers. Yeah, favoritism. They got their own cliques. They don't treat you equal. Equal opportunity, my eye. They got their own kind. You know why? Because they get strings attached expectation. God has the greatest employ is the greatest employer. Truly opportunity. God has true opportunity. 
equal opportunity. You know why, my friend? It doesn't matter what your nationality, it doesn't matter what color your skin, it doesn't matter how big, how skinny, how thin, how white, it doesn't matter. All that matter is God loves you, period. You need to know Him. Get to know Him. How? Open the Bible. You know what the Bible stands for? Basic instructions before leaving earth. B-I-B-L-E. Basic instructions before leaving earth. That's right, my friend. God loves you, my friend, and He wants the best for you. But my friend, why are you holding yourself down? Why are you still with the chain on, the chains? Why? You're not in prison. My friend, the key is right on the table looking at you to open up and take off those shackles and those chains around you. My friend, God loves you. You're special. My friend, God has to be in the center of your life. Jesus has to be in the center of your life. Jesus has to be the captain of your ship. Because if not, your ship going to be sinking. Too much lips sink the ship. Especially if you're not talking about God, but you're gossiping about everything else. My friend, it's time that you truly sit down and get to know God, my friend. You know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, says if we confess with the mouth and believe that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved, my friend. God loves you, and the proof is in the pudding, my friend. No, it's not in the pudding. It's in the Word of God that clearly says that. Confess to God that I am a sinner, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ for my sins on the cross, that God has took all my sins on the cross with Him, my friend. You shall be saved. And then, my friend, you need to find a good church. When you're seeking a church, find a good church. The sad thing about it is now... Um, I mean, I've been in church almost going to be 50 years now in church. Sad to say you cannot find good Bible study churches now. There are no more Bible study. That's scary. Nobody have a right to raise their hand and ask questions. Excuse me. That's not a, that's not a, that's not a class. That's not a teachings. If, if you only can hear the person lecturing you, that's not no teachings. People have the right to ask questions. Just like Nicodemus, the man who knew the Bible better than anybody, even him had to ask Jesus question. Jesus never said, hey, you know it all, my man. You're the main Bible teacher. How dare you come ask me questions? Get out of here. Jesus never said that. When Nicodemus came to Jesus, he said, Lord, what must I do to be saved? Nicodemus asked Jesus an a honest, awesome, good question. And Jesus' response was, you must be born again. Not talking about coming out of your mother. No, my friend. Your mother probably would push you back in. <laughs> she wouldn't go tolerate with you for another nine months. What I'm trying to tell you here is you must be baptized in water. We bring you in the water. We baptize you and we bring you out. It's not sprinkling water on you. Like some churches do. They sprinkle water in you. They call it holy water. All they do is put salt in the water. There ain't no holy water, my friend. That's negative. Baptism is a submission uh, yourself, you're submitting yourself, you're being obedient, you're going in front of people in public and saying, I love Jesus, I love God, now it's time I'm going to do what He told me to do, I'm going to get baptized. It's like when we dip you in the water, we're bringing you up, we're burying you from the dead, and when we bring you back up, you're risen from the dead. Now you're no longer with the death sentence. Now you can say, oh death, death, where is your sting? My friend, God loves you. God truly loves you you my friend so go to a solid church if you live in pearl city my friend we have a powerful church called the new wine church in pearl, pearl city highlands elementary school pastor della hara and eric hara who is the pastor out there they're loving people the church is called new wine right when you pass, pass the police station look on your right hand side and you'll see right across you see the bridge Go right underneath, look on the right side, you can see a nice metal sign says New Wine Church. The phone number is on your screen, 381-6534. My friend, they're so lovable people. They bring me so much joy. I love them, and they're my family. Yes, my friend, I love, I don't just stay like glue one place. When God tell me move, I move somewhere else. And my friend at Christ Center Life Mission Church, right in Kaneohe, my friend. A lot of lovable Filipinos, it's called Christ Center Life Mission Church full of Filipinos with good English and delicious food, especially the adobo. But the greatest of all the food that they serve there is 
the Word of God. Yes, my friend, good teachers, good speaking pastor, Pastor Joseph Tadaro, Pastor Jake Nabong, Pastor Nelson. My friend, we're so blessed, and I love that church. It's located right in Kaneohe on Kehala Road, next to Jack in the Box. There's the drive through All you do is when you look at the drive through look on the outside of the fence. You can see the building right in front, the metal building says, Christ Center Life Mission Church. We're in the warehouse in the front. Sunday service starts, my friend, at 2 p.m. is the Bible study, and 3 p.m. is the main service. We also have service at 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday night. That's right. And then we also have prayer night. My friend, if you know people need prayer for healing of any reason, for anything, for any season, you can come down yourself if you want to. On Friday night, church service starts at 7.30 p.m. Right next to Jack in the Box by the drive through at the warehouse. My friend, you got to find a solid church because I tell you, your soul is going to depend on it. If, if you're sitting in a church and it's lukewarm and, and watered down gospel, you're falling asleep in church like this. That's a sad church, my friend. That's the health syndrome. You better off staying home with Father Mattress and St. Pillow. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm telling you, you, you got to find a church that is going to stir you up. They're going to get you excited. They're going to get you into the Word of God, reading the Bible together. They're going to get you showing and demonstrating the Word of God and demonstrating the love of God, being the walker, the talker of the Word, not just the big mouth talker. You have to have a balance, my friend. If you don't have a balanced physical, a balanced spiritual, then you're off balance. Yes, my friend. God loves you so much. He wants to embrace you. Get to know Jesus. My friend, my number is going to show up on the television screen. You can call me up for prayer for any reason, my friend. I'm here for you. I'm there to support you, my friend. We don't care about your money. We're after your soul. Your soul depends more to me than anything else on earth. Everything else no mean nothing, my friend. So remember, you need to find a solid church. The New Wine Church in Pro City, but across from the police station. Or Christ Center Life Church right in Kaneohe. My friend, we love you. We appreciate you so much for tuning in. And I know God is going to bless you. And big breakthrough is coming in your life. My friend, the bill's coming in. Put a rubbish can with fire and burn them all when it arrives in your mailbox. No, I'm just joking. What you need to do is put your hand and oil on them and rebuke them. And then stop going into the stores and spending money unnecessarily. Leave your cash secured somewhere else so you don't have the temptation. The more money you got, the more you want to spend. My friend at The Greatest Awakening, we thank you. We truly appreciate you. My friend, God loves you. All I can say is, Aloha, Ahuiho, Malama Pono, Jesus loves you. <laughs>